Okay. All right. Uh, I want to call Monday, August 5th, 2024, the regular city council meeting to uh, at 7 p.m. Um, if you'd like to stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Um, tonight, uh, we have Andrew, <laughs> Councilor of the Friends, and Councilor Bailey are excused absence. Everyone else is here. Um, looking for an approval of agenda. I do want to add one thing. To our consent agenda, I'd like to add the reappointment of Rita Bernhardt to the Planning Commission on the consent agenda. That I am looking for approval of the amended agenda. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilor. Adjaga. I approve the consent agenda with the updates of, of regular, agenda. regular agenda? Yeah. Okay, the regular agenda. I have a motion to accept the um, agenda, the amended agenda tonight. Any seconds? Second. Second by Council President Miller. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Public comment. Uh, this place on the agenda where the public is invited to speak to Council regarding any matter not on the agenda and not scheduled for public hearing. Members of the public addressing council are requested to give their name and city of residence. Please try not to repeat questions to allow for more speakers. Speakers are to limit their testimony to five minutes as we're limited to 30 minutes total for public comment. Tonight, I do have Joel Haugen, if you'd like to come on down. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Pleasure to be here on such a nice evening. So uh, I've got some some kind of quick comments. Uh, first of all, is uh, um, I want to congratulate you all for your selection of uh, of Ben Bergener for your uh, next city council, next uh, city manager. I had the opportunity to meet with him recently, and um, after that meeting, I'm, I'm I was favorably impressed. And I'm I'm very optimistic for the future. So I think he's going to be good for a good fit for Scappoos. We're going to, it's going to be a really good thing for the city and everybody's going to, yeah, it's going to be a win-win. So good work. Let's work on that. Um, my point for being here this evening is, uh, is the, is the bucks and remand. So I think it's been about 90 days. I, April 30th, I think was when the Luba ruled on that. Um, and, uh, uh, I've been advised to publicly, publicly request both the anticipated procedures and the schedule for adjudicating this matter. For those two things I've been advised to request in public, so it's on the record. And I don't understand what, why that's needed, but it, I, I was advised to do that. So here I am. Then regarding that, um, given FEMA's pre-implementation compliance measures, and I'm going I'm to hand this out to you, and the potential for a comprehensive watershed study grant from the Columbia River Restoration Fund being sponsored by Scappoose Bay Watershed Council, seems sensible to pause plans for any new bucks and hearings, both actions could well have significant impacts on bucks and farms floodplain development. By the way, just by coincidence, uh, this afternoon I got an email from our FEMA's Region 10 office uh, uh, and they noted that all, I mean all, a Clomar F and Lomar Fs in Oregon are suspended as of August 1st pending full National Flood Insurance Program EIS implementation. So that's of significance. So, and I'm gonna give you the, the guidance here that FEMA published here this, this past month for uh, consideration. But anyway, thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. So I gotta write a schedule of kind of a where we are and what their timeline is moving forward is what you would need, Joel. Thank you. Any more online or anything, Susan? Thank you.
Okay. We're now moving on to our consent agenda for approval of the consent agenda. Tonight, we're looking at July 10, 2024, special city council meeting minutes and July 15, 2024, city council meeting minutes and a report, uh, reappointment of Rita Bernhardt to the planning commission. Approval. Here. Council Santiago. I approve the uh, consent agenda. Motion by Councilor Santiago to approve the consent agenda. Any second? Second. Second by Council President Miller. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The real reason we're all here tonight. <laughs> um, I, you've all seen our beautiful uh, quilt artwork up here on the wall, and it's time to kind of go over uh, where that came from and why it's here. So tonight, um have a couple special thank yous and as i call your name maybe if you come up and we can get a picture and everything here but i'll read this here we have a plaque that will go up with our quilt but on june 5th 2024 after over a year of work and coordination the scapu senior center quilters and crafters donated a commemorative quilt for the city's 100 year anniversary composed of over 25 community members designed and sewn historical and representative quilt block this quilt stands as a visual and artistic representation of the history and community of Scapoos from 1921 through 2024. The city of Scapoos would like to thank and acknowledge the following community members for their time and efforts in crafting this quilt. Beth Glossinger, Log Cabin Block. Carlene Houghton, Houghton uh, Boat Houses on the Channel Block. Cindy Hoff, Planes, Trains, Ichabod's Church and Quilt on Fence Block. Dent Murphy, Wigwam, Veterans Memorial, and Logging in the Forest Block. Heather Benassi, Library Block. Ida Gatlin, Farmer's Market, Farms, and Scapoose Name Block. block. Judy Stoller, Totem Pole, and 100-Year Logo Block. June Schober, Steinfeld's Block. Kathy Burke, Burt Hartsmeyer, uh, Flag and Sailboat Block. Pam Alexander, Thrift Store Block. Pat Turpin, Frogs in the Yard Block. Dave Okana, Cabbage Garden Block, Rosemary Bisner, Local Bakery Block, Susan Brashears, Coffee Cup and Coffee Shop Block, and hand quilting was completed by Jan Weber and Donette Murphy. Come on down. Uh, appreciate it very much. Thank you. Yeah, all of you. Yes, it's all had a it's part of picture time. <laughs> because of you. You guys can be in the newsletter. This goes here with the. Yeah. Thank you. Take a chance. Yeah, take a look at all the pictures. They're great. Thank you. Thank you. That's for sure. Now the room will clear. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stick around? It goes. I do something like that every month to get people yeah. here. They're going to miss all the cake and. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like your pants. I like your pants. Flowers. Okay, thank we'll you. Wednesday, Friday lunch still. Oh, yes. Okay, moving on to number three. We've got a Columbia County Jail Levy. Uh, Sheriff Brian Pixley invited you. Uh, you have a 
levy coming up on the November ballot, and we'd like to hear from you and let us know a little bit about it. All right, well, first, I have to thank you for getting me on the agenda so quickly. Um, I'm going to be having surgery next week, so it's kind of trying to squeeze everything into this week as I can. Um, I have some prepared comments, but more so, I just wanted to have a conversation with you guys, answer your questions. Um, so thank you for inviting me to speak with you guys today. Um, as you said, we are looking to have a jail levy on the ballot again in November. Um, in 2014, just kind of a little history, in 2014, the Kenny voters uh, voted to pass a three-year jail operations levy. Uh, that was to keep the jail open. At that point, we were actually planning on closing the jail. The levy helped us keep it open. Uh, and that was for 58 cents per $1,000 of assessed value. 2017 and again in 2020, voters approved um, renewal of that, of that levy for the same amount. As you guys know, prices are going up. Um, our medical costs have gone up 126, 128% over the past few years. And so this year we're asking voters to once again approve a renewal of the levy in a new amount, 75,000 or 75 cents per $1,000. In case you didn't know, the jail has three primary sources of income. We get a million dollars from the general fund every year. Uh, we have some revenue coming in from bed rentals. We rent beds to the U.S. Marshal Service. Then the other, other, other source of income is, our, of course, our, property, our current property tax levy. Uh, we recently renegotiated our, our U.S. Marshal's contract. I think it went into effect in April, April 1st or May 1st. I cannot remember which one of this year. And that raised our bed rental rate from $92. $92 per night per inmate to $127 per night per inmate. So that was a very, very good shot in the arm for us. I'm just trying to skip through this stuff. Um, to, prior to the jail levy in 2014, like I said earlier, we were planning on actually closing the jail. That year alone, we were forced to release 748 inmates back in, into, the, into the public just because we didn't have the uh, space or the money to keep them. Once the, since the jail levy passed, uh, we have not released any inmates due to bed space, due to money, any any sort of constraints. Um, and the number of inmates booked into our, our facility grows every year. Last year, we booked in 3,057 inmates, or an average of just over eight inmates uh, every day of the year. The dark reality that we're facing right now is without the jail levy, there just isn't enough to keep the jail open. So if the levy fails, um, we're going to have to look into different, different ways we can hold people accountable. I think it's going to be very... Uh, very difficult to do that. It's essentially gonna, gonna neuter public safety in Columbia County. That's frankly scares the hell out of me. Um, I was I was around back 2014 and that was that was a bad year for us for Columbia County. We had people actually coming into the state from out of state to commit crimes because they didn't think we would be able to hold them accountable. Then the levy got passed and now they're in prison. <laughs> Lucky luckily for us. Um, it's kind of what I the information I wanted to convey. I sent you guys some information. We can have a conversation. About, I can answer some questions. And what I'm hoping for tonight is uh, you guys to vote to publicly support this jail levy. This is just as important to the city of Scappoose as it is to the city of residents of St. Helens. It is to my deputies across the county. Answer any questions for you guys? One I have kind of quickly. Um, is your 58 cents now, has that ended? That will end. Uh, at the in June, June 30th, 30, 30, June 30th of next year, and this is to replace that, yes, sir, at an additional 20 cents, so 78 cents. Additional, yeah, it's it will it'll be a little, a little less than that. I think 17 cents, we're going to 75 cents per thousand. Does that change over time with more and more houses? I mean, is it a set amount or is it always just 75, 78 cents? It's, it's a set amount. Um, the only thing that changes that is uh, compression. Right, so as more levies are passed, that can get compressed down further. Um, and that just compounds to the money that we're already lagging behind. Really, what caused a lot of this, I think, is COVID. During COVID, COVID once COVID hit, we really we weren't accepting new U.S. Marshal inmates. Um, so when they would, as they would take inmates out, typically they replace them with two or three. But this time during COVID, we couldn't want to chance them introducing any sort of illnesses into our jail, our population. So we did not let them replace the inmates that they were taking out. Um, so because of that lack of bed rental, we had to use kind of our, our savings account to fill in the holes. Since then, as you guys are aware, every, prices for everything have skyrocketed. Our, our, it's 20, I think since 2020, our 
medical contract alone went from 600 some thousand to 1.5 million this year. Food contract, I believe, went from, you have to quote me on this, but $400,000 to almost $700,000. Everything's going up. Our, our, all of our deputies, all of our, our employees are represented by union. So their wages go up every year as well. We're just kind of trying to play catch up. And again, this is a way that we can help keep the jail open, keep public safety alive in Columbia County. Without really putting you on the spot, uh, Mr. Llewellyn, Chief, um, you have, I mean, how does it work in Scappoose with the Columbia County Jail? How does, when you guys have people here, we use the jail quite a bit, correct? Uh, correct. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so generally speaking, if we have any type of criminal behavior here, we will transport a subject to Columbia County Jail. Um, I don't know what the options will be from the sheriff, but if it possibly doesn't pass with no fear mongering, um, that could possibly mean us transporting to different counties if we get a deal, such as Monoma County or Washington County or close places to transport. Um, in Oregon, there are particular laws that are required mandatory arrests, such for like for domestic violence. So those are things we can't use off the stretching with and just cite people. Uh, I can tell from my personal experience, working in the state of Washington and Tacoma, we had a situation where they were short staffed and there are certain people who know about these certain things and then criminal activity can pick up. There's an instance where we had a person who was arrested for a stolen car, had a warrant for a stolen car, and it still went taken to jail. One thing I can say here, working with Columbia County, which is great, is that if somebody were to even, if you wanted to, if somebody were to steal a candy bar from um, Fred Myers, we'd be still hold them accountable for one of It's off discretion. Those, those are a couple of things that will affect us. So our officers may transport and go somewhere else that may take hours or side of citizens. That's one thing I'm really trying to avoid is you mentioned the fear mongering. I kind of why I didn't, I haven't really pushed a whole lot, but this is kind of, uh, I prefer to look at this as a kind of a reality check for, for all of us. Sheriff, how long um, would this levy be in effect? Three years. And um, well, after that four years, do you believe that you would be more solvent or would this be potentially another? I think this is going to be recurring. This has been recurring for, for 10 years. Um, ultimately, I would like to uh, roll it into a permanent taxing district, but I just haven't had the bandwidth with that's gone on in the world the past three years to focus on that. How the levy works, I mean, you're looking for a, basically about a $3.5 million a year amount, and they divide that by amount of houses to get um, kind of how much per thousand. Yeah. So with more housing, I mean, you're still getting that amount, you said, whatever. Yeah, so the only thing that affects that is compression. And this, the extra money will equate, if my math was correct, about $5.67 extra every month. Um, could I ask for a clarification? What was the um, first expense that you talked about, the increase? It was something to 1.5 million medical. So what did it start at? I, it was 600 and some thousand change. Okay. So, um, that's really helpful context. And I just want to point out, you know, for people who say uh, maybe we should be looking at, you know, budget cuts in other ways to fill gaps and that you've experienced from a healthcare perspective over 100% increase in costs for food, about 75% increase in cost. But what you're asking for in the levy is about a 35 or 40% increase over what the current one. So that tells me that you've done a very good job leveraging other contracts, trying to get revenue from beds. Um, and this truly is the, the last resort. So what you're coming to the community with is not reflective of the cost of good increases and the inflation and the cost of living increases that you have had to incur to keep things operational. Right. You know, my, my parents live here in Scappoos. I moved them out here about three years ago. I um, mean, they're on a fixed income, and my dad made me sit down with him. He's like, why should I vote for your levy, Brian? <laughs> said, well, gee, thanks, Pops. Appreciate that. We had about an hour-long conversation. At the end, he's like, well, I guess I vote for it. <laughs> so I'm very cognizant about why, why I share that story. I'm very cognizant about those in our community that are on, on fixed income, that are lower income. Um, the, without a jail, it's just going to compound, essentially harm them more. That's why I'm... I'm doing this. So yes, you right. haven't raised it into 10 years since right. 15. Yeah, it's been the same amount since it was first first passed in 2014. 
And Sheriff, can you talk about the limitation of medical providers and what you've done to be creative there to try to uh, not sustain the huge increase in medical expenses? Yeah, so that's kind of a, a couple fold. Since we're a smaller rural jail, um, you know, we go through an RFP process, but the big medical vendors that can that can afford to to bend and not make as much money, they don't want to come out to us. They want to go to Multnomah County or Washington County where they can make a lot more money. So last time we put out an RFP, we had one person or one company actually answer the RFP. Um, since then, I've actually met with uh, the Clasp County Sheriff who have a different model for medical. Their medical, they have uh, any, all their medical employees are county employees. Um, and that's that's some savings to them. You know, they have half the population that we do. They, you t he said they typically spend about eight hundred with eight hundred thousand to a million dollars per year on on medical. Um, so that's one thing that we're looking into doing right now to help try to lower our cost in the in the sh short term. And is the same true with the food services contract? Yes, sir. So you had asked about a possible resolution to support. Um, are we interested in looking at one? Being that it's already, it's not on the ballot at this time, correct? It'll be on the on the ballot in November. So we can have potentially have staff help with that if it's not on the ballot yet. Uh, well, do we have if it is council, so if it's council's pleasure to support it, we can certainly um, write a resolution. We can write a resolution to just avoid staff having yeah. that potential conflict. So, we already have a resolution that we could mirror it after. So that I think legal counsel had assisted with in the past. And as with everything else, if any if questions come up, please feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email. Stop by the sheriff's office. I'm more than willing to give you guys a tour of the jail. Um, and I have done that. That was very eye opening. And just surprised that I'm sorry. Just surprised that you didn't get any funding. COVID, any state funding. Like oh, so the county did get some ARPA funds, um, but they allocated elsewhere in the county. That's for the sheriff's office. It's neither here nor there. Okay, well then, um, I'll um, feel that we have at least uh, uh, looking at a potential resolution. Um, are we interested in? We don't have to vote, and we'll vote on a resolution if we decide to look at one. But if we're willing to entertain the, the look uh, a resolution one together and the mayor I appreciate it thank appreciate you. your guys time and thank you again for thank giving me thank, thank, thank you so are you looking for a consensus then um yes if I had to draft a yeah draft I had, resolution yeah if I had four people that were okay with drafting a resolution I an issue with that I would be supportive of that. I mean, given the community's support for maintaining our police department, and it seems that a jail is directly uh, related to how successful you can be in your community policing, I think it's natural that we would entertain considering a resolution on this. I'll also do a little more digging, due diligence, and look into this more to that point as well and learn more about it. Thank you. 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 Okay, on to local news. We have uh, number four contract. Contract for Keys Road Reservoir Project. Contract Administrator Charlotte Baker. Hello, uh, good evening. I have actually two. Um, contract authorizations and a task order authorization for you tonight. Um, so the first one is the Keys Road Reservoir Project. Um, some of what I included in the staff report is uh, repeats of something or of things you've already heard because you've um, done contract approvals for other portions of the project. But um, just as a reminder, um, the city is developing or building a new uh, three million gallon reservoir at the Keys Road water treatment site. Um, the engineering phase of the project was completed this spring in May, and on June 5th, we opened up the bidding process for the construction phase of the project. Um, we ended up getting three bids opened on July 11th uh, from Emory & Sons Construction, um, Moore Excavation, and Ward Henshaw Construction. 
Um, we published our uh, engineer's estimate for this project at 9.2 million. So we were pretty pleased to see that um, more excavation came in well under that at 8,845,000. Um, they were the lowest bid and the bid package was reviewed by RH2, which is the engineering firm that did the design and city staff. Um, their proposal was acceptable, um, good, felt good moving forward with them. RH2 recommended that we do move forward with them as well. Um, we just need your approval for that contract. Um, and again, those funds come in part from ARPA funds uh, distributed through Business Oregon and that SRF loan um, that I've brought to you before, I think a couple times. That's through the DEQ. Um, so I recommend that council authorize acting city manager Dave Suka to enter mm -hmm. the city into a contract with More Excavation Inc. to complete the Keys Road Reservoir project. Some of this funding was urban renewal dollars we signed. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and when would this begin? Um, Contractors poised to start immediately. They've already made some preparations, working on submittals and such. Uh, they hope to begin excavation during this summer still so that we can beat the wet weather. Some of that earthwork done right away. Final completion would be by? A year. Um, how many gallons are the two up on top of Bella Vista? 1.267 million. Twice as big. 267 is offline. That's the one that was built in 1946. We haven't used that. So technically, we're taking 1 million off the line until the new one's back. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, Dave, uh, is this a, where's Moore located at? Uh, Portland. Okay. East Portland. We didn't. Uh, and just for reference there, I'm 99% I'm sure they're the contractor building the waterfront in St. Helens and things. They're are this area. Are any of these other two local, as in Scappies, Columbia County? No. Or is everybody out no, area? They're okay. all bigger companies than, than county contractor okay. support. Um, they're both very reputable, or all of them are very reputable. Ward Hinshaw, I'm not familiar with, but they were anticipated by the design engineers as a bidder. They do this a lot. So there were no surprises in the bidders, as I understand it, from the engineer. Did the engineer review the bids or the proposals? Okay. And they, of course, I mean, obviously you're making the recommendations. There wasn't any concerns about more. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council President Miller. I move that Council authorize Acting City Manager Dave Sukow to enter into contract with more excavation incorporated to complete the Keys Road Reservoir Project. A motion by Council President Miller to authorize Acting City Manager Dave Suka to enter the city into a contract with more excavation and incorporated to complete the Keys Road Reservoir project. Any second? Second by Councilor Jacobs. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Charlotte, a contract for basalt well infrastructure and conveyance and design. Administrator Charlotte Baker with the staff report. So um, still on the water treatment side of things, um, the Miller Road water treatment plant has several wells. Um, and in December 2023, the city entered into a contract with Carpenter Drilling to drill in case ad an additional well at the Miller Road water treatment plant. Um, this is known as the Miller Road Basalt Well. Um, that's still ongoing, but once that is completed, an engineering firm is needed to assist in the design and construction of the well equipping and connection to the existing facilities on site. Um, the value of the engineering services fell below the $250,000 threshold that's required. Um, that would trigger us to um, issue an RFP or an ITB. Um, so per Oregon procurement law, uh, bids can be solicited by phone, fax, or email. Dave Suka uh, attempted to source quotes from three engineering firms. Um, that Three is also the law. You have to at least attempt to source three quotes. Um, and chose firms the city has worked with successfully in the past, PACE engineers, CONSOR engineers, and RH2. PACE, RH2, and CONSOR all initially agreed to provide a quote. PACE ended up um, backing out. They just didn't have the capacity. But CONSOR and RH2 did provide us with quotes. CONSOR quoted us at $163,317, and RH2's quote was 
Um, Dave and I both compared the scopes of work submitted by RH2 and Consor. They were virtually identical. Um, so of course we went with RH2 being the far cheaper option of the two. Um, and again, these this project is funded by ARPA money distributed by Business Oregon. And this below or at a budget that you originally thought of, close to the hundred thousand level. Yeah, the um, Consor actually did the design work for Dutch Canyon two and three wells, and they were right in this upper ninety range. So we were a little bit taken back actually by the Consor bid being at the one hundred and sixty mark. We're hoping we were expecting it to be right at the hundred thousand dollar range. So uh, RH two landed right at mm -hmm. that. Consor was obviously higher. So being it's funded by the ARPA dollars, that's um, we have that much set aside for this project for ARPA dollars. Yes, we actually hope to have an excess amount of money in ARPA that once we know the final, so there'll be one more phase to this, we'll actually have to hire a contractor to do the work that these folks are designing. The conclusion of that, then we'll be able to total all of that against the ARPA that's been identified and roll those extra funds into one of our other ARPA projects. So oh, yes, with this, this project will be fully funded. There will be no. Shortfalls. They're all completed within the timeline that ARPA requires. Provided that they are, but we don't anticipate there being an issue. This project has until 2026 for completion. We anticipate this being done by summer of 25. Okay. I didn't want the job. <laughs> no, they really did. I, I, I just. I shared with them the results. They reached out and said, how'd we do? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mark on this one. Yeah. We have a motion. Yep. Mr. Mayor, I move that council authorize acting city manager Dave Sukow to enter the city into a contract with RH2 engineering for basalt well infrastructure and conveyance design. Motion by Councilor Holmes to authorize acting city manager Dave Suka to enter the city into a contract with RH2 engineering for basalt well infrastructure and conveyance design. Any second? Councilor Jacobs, any more discussion? Uh, Dave, I just want to say that I'm happy to see that uh, both of the lowest bids uh, met the requirements, and that's not always the case with RFPs. Um, sometimes you get the lower bids, but they're not as qualified. Um, so in this case, I'm very happy to see that the lowest bids prevailed. Yeah, and the city has a pool of very good, reputable engineers. Pace actually would have been a good one too. They did the design work, a lot of design work at Keys for the filters. They did our filter replacement design for the media and things about a year ago. So we've, we've got a good rapport going. They provided solid work. Uh, RH2 was who designed the reservoir and stuff. So they're doing a not great job there. So yeah, we're very pleased with where we're at. More discussion. See none. All those in favor, state by saying aye. Okay. Opposed? Carried. One more. We have Consor Contract Amendment, Wastewater Treatment Plant Phase 1 Engineering. Contract Administrator Charlotte Baker with the staff report. Um, as I'm sure you all recall, in, in May of this year, um, you approved a contract with McClure & Sons for the construction of the city's wastewater treatment plant phase one project. That was that big $16 million um, contract. The engineering for that project was completed by Consor engineers, um, and they were also responsible for helping uh, put the project out to bid and evaluating bids um, received by the city. Um, due to the technical and complex nature of the project, there's a lot of moving pieces in it. There's sort of two parts to the project. Um, it's necessary for Consor to remain part of the project for the duration of the construction phase. Um, Consor will provide project management services, construction administration, engineering services, and project project closeout support uh, for the city and construction contractors. These staff worked with Consor to value engineer their initial proposal and scope in order to save on costs while maximizing the services provided. Their initial scope was um, quite a bit higher. I can't remember what exactly the figure was, but um, Dave sat down with Consor and sort of stripped out unnecessary parts to try to get bring them down a little bit. Um, their fee is $835,592. Uh, 
And um, staff recommends that council authorize acting city manager Dave Suka to enter the city into a task order with consular engineers to complete the wastewater treatment plant phase one engineering consultation and project management services. Thank you. And um, now, how is this one being? How does that be in the budget? Being paid for? Um, part of it. It's going to go against the loan. It'll be debt. It's part of the construction factor that we have to have. We have to have the oversight. Um, the design engineer you know, designs it. Somebody needs to make sure that the contractor is doing the right thing. You don't have that capacity within our staff. Anybody qualified for those level of inspections? So this is. This is just one of those costs that's part of doing business, if you will. So we didn't foresee it. We no, we foresaw it. We knew we knew that this was coming. Um, it was just a matter of the timing when it was relevant. We've actually been asking Consort for this scope for a month now. Um, because we already have a contractor down there working as we speak. So get this rolling and get the oversight going. Yes. Go ahead, Miller. Dave, can you remind me what the total cost of this project is? Well, you're 16. Uh, we're going to be probably right about 19 million when it's said and done. Sorry, 19 what? Uh, that's the concluding the bio dryer. So between million. between the yeah million. between the bio dryer and the phase one contractor for the construction of that and all of the work that we paid in design, somewhere around 19 million. Does that include the engineering or yes? Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, I mean, phase one. So that yes, phase a, phase one will be fully million, operational. Three, ga three million gallon tank. This is wastewater. This is down at the wastewater plant. Full rebuild. Oh, of the, the rebuild wastewater. of the wastewater. Yes. Gotcha. So the engineering cost, I just want to point this out, is less than 5% of the total project, which what do we normally, what are engineering costs are usually what percent of a total project? It's usually, it 10, can vary. Yeah, it's usually 10, 10 and plus percent. And if this is less than, yeah, this is less than five or about 5% of the total. So, okay. Yeah, but this is the oversight of construction. We've already paid about 1.3 1. 1. Okay. million in engineering. This is just construction oversight for the next two years. Okay. To get us through construction. Okay. Management and oversight. Now, this is two years worth of work. This isn't going to happen quickly. Mm -hmm. And this is their subcontractors, their special inspections and different things, electrical oversight. There's more to it than just them. They're going to be there quite often then. Sometimes we, all the documentation. I just, okay. I just want to say, it just because because of, uh, it's but due to technical complex nature of this project, it kind of sounds like because it's so complicated, like almost you didn't anticipate it. That's why I was asking. So, but you were we we anticipated needing this. Like I said, we've been asking for this. Would have got this approval sooner had they provided it a little bit sooner. Like unfortunately, we're in the eleventh hour now that we're starting construction and just now getting this approval. But it was out of our hands. Is there any additional other types of these kinds of? Um, that you're we we don't know yet or you're waiting on no no Start. no 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 this this is fully anticipated not quite following you 100 percent. i don't think but well just like you said you know you knew about this but i i you were just I waiting for consort to provide the scope and fee to us for this portion of the work and um so they're going to start they're starting with the other wastewater have to come down for a time bearing period to bring this up or does it just flip a switch and it's all never stop down. the system cannot stop yeah no, they have I'll they have to, that's town. that's the biggest part of this is the coordination of how you build something while other things are online and how you transfer those flows around there's nowhere else to ship it it just keeps coming he said ship it. <laughs> ship it so after when after this two years, what happens? Do, are they are they training staff on, or, or is it just two years? They're overseeing this project and it's done, and we don't need them. What is so this that? Will, okay, so this is for the duration of the construction, which we anticipate to take about two years. So these folks will be working hand in hand with the contractor, as well as our staff, for the coordination of operations and things as things transform around. Um, in the when the construction project is complete, mm -hmm. 
there will be O and M manuals, and all of the training will be done between the contractor, the engineer, and our staff, so that when they all sign off on it, the engineer from this contract signs off and says, "Yes, this was built for our plans, per our design," and they give green light to aid the contractor. You are done. You fulfilled your obligations. It's part. Of, that's the whole process is included in here. Yes. Okay. It should get us to the finish line. Okay. Hey, uh, seeing that, any more, uh, any motions, any suggested motions? And that's turned to read it. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Brother Miller. Yes. I, I move that council authorize acting city manager Dave Sukow to enter the city into a task order with concert engineers to complete the wastewater treatment plant phase one engineering consultation and project management services. I have a motion by Council President Miller to authorize acting city manager Dave Suka to enter the city into a task order with consort engineers to complete the wastewater treatment plant phase one engineering consultation and project management services. Any seconds? Jacob seconds. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. Thank you. Appreciate it. Reports. Get on to the calendar. We're on August 5th. Uh, this Thursday, a planning commission uh, at 7 p.m. Movies in, movies by mid moonlight in the park uh, every Friday in August. Starting at 7, movies about dusk. Uh, again, Farmer's Market, Saturdays, uh, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. all of August. Right now, tentatively, uh, August 15th, we have an EDC meeting at noon um, and a Parks and Rec meeting at 6 p.m. EDC might have been canceled. Um, and then we do have a council work session at 6 p.m. August 19th, followed by a council meeting at 7 p.m. on August 19th, another planning commission meeting on August 22nd. Uh, any updates from Acting City Manager Dave Suka? Not knowing exactly what you'd like to know. Yeah, movies in the park went off without a hitch this past Friday. Um, Public Works crews worked diligently that day to get the park looking as nice as it can, and I think it looks really good. Um, our Public Works crews are also doing street maintenance work throughout the summer months and along with the parks. Uh, we have a county traffic safety meeting that the city participates in. We'll be doing that on Wednesday morning. Staff safety meetings will be tomorrow, and then I'll be participating in the Northwest Act meeting on Thursday. That's it for this week. Thank you. Police Department. Yes. Um, doing movie by moonlight. How were the hot dogs made? Were they good? Great. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. So, Drilled to perfection. <laughs> Thank you. So we got that going on, guys. We're doing that. We're doing it for the rest of the um, August. Tomorrow I'll be assisting with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office with the National Day Out. So if you want to dunk me in a dunk tank, I'll be there tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Get your anger out. Perfectly. No, no, no problem stopping by. Um, I'm also reached out to Portland Police Bureau, uh, referencing getting calls to the city, no calls to the city, um, riot gear or turtle gear just for things, or things like that that needs to be. Um, my goal, hopefully, in the future, would maybe don't have to go through the legal, is forming a team with partners in Columbia County and just have that response. Hopefully, we'll never have to need it, uh, but just start thinking about that process and do something now. I think it's important for my own personal experiences when I was a state patrol and stuff happened. So, um, nothing on the radar for that, but just getting that process rolling. Um, but besides that, uh, thank you guys very much for this opportunity. I definitely appreciate it. I'll let's not go light on me for this position. It was earned term, and uh, my best to keep this thing going and provide service to the city. So, that's all I have. Pending any questions? Appreciate it. You all have something here in a minute. Uh, Councilor Jacobs. Councillor Holmes. Uh, yeah, just uh, monitoring social media over the past week. There seems to be, um, you know, a real uptick in some of the uh, traffic issues and collisions and unfortunately fatalities on Highway 30. So just imploring people to be safe, pay attention, don't be distracted, um, and make sure you get home to your loved ones. Thank you. Councillor Santiago. Um, I just want to say... Um, you for everyone it was a great session i'm glad that we're getting out of here early um not done, <laughs> not done yet uh so i just uh, omic is having a, just a lot of events for the summers i know that there's for if you have kids um they have a fun friday 
Fab Lab. Uh, so a great activity. Please go into their website, OMIC PCC uh, Training Center. They have a bunch of events, also trainings for businesses. Um, they have uh, business literacy classes and um, robotics. And so please use the the resources and the uh, what we have here in the community because if we don't use them, we lose them. So please take advantage um, and uh, just like the movies in the park, please take out. It's a I think Scapoos has great uh, events for the whole family, and we should just take advantage of it. Thank you, Council President Miller. Thank you. Uh, the mayor and I attended the Movies in the Park on the 2nd uh, to kick off the Movies in the Park event for the month of August, and it was a great time. It was very hot, as everybody already knows. Um, Susan, if uh, you're open to it, I would like to talk to you about potentially putting together a, um, like a kind of a go kit, in lack of a better term, to be able to, for council to be able to go have um, a more, uh, visually pleasing table at these events. Um, we kind of found ourselves piecing together whatever we could find in this room. And um, our uh, big parks uh, poster back there behind the whiteboard kept uh, flying away on us. So if we, I'll work with you. I have some ideas, um, of course, with uh, uh, interim city manager, Sukau's blessing. I think that would be something that would be very positive that as these events come up, we can just grab like a Rubbermaid container or something and have the different things with the proper paperweights for different seasons um, and maybe even one that has a tent or something like that for the rainy season too. Um, but I think it's something that we need just so that we uh, can look more professional and have the necessary resources to be able to hand out and talk to the community about. Um, I did attend the uh, county commissioner's meeting last Wednesday, and the only thing um, that I think was notable that this council will be interested in is there continues to be a discussion about the broadband efforts and reaching um, those people that um, they call the underserved with the internet. Um, there definitely uh, is, this is my opinion of it, and my observation of it is there's a disconnect um, in between what uh, I think some of the county commissioners feel is the appropriate route. And a lot of that, um, from what I gathered listening, and you can, of course, go uh, watch the recording and form your own opinion. But my opinion of it, just watching it, um, was that the build out of infrastructure to be able to do broadband countywide to those underserved throughout the county um, does have some grant funds uh, tied to it, but it does require matching. And so this isn't a issue that um, we're not familiar with in the smaller communities with lack of funding, but the issue always becomes where are we going to get the matching money and we're talking about millions of dollars and so i think some of the um the tension there in lack of a better term is that i don't think the county knows where they could potentially get matching funds so then the issue becomes we've had these discussions before here too is why are we spending money on studies and other things if we know the end result is something that we can't really obtain um, so it was an interesting discussion. I would encourage you guys to go on the county's website and watch the recording for yourself because the broadband topic is a topic that um, I think does have a lot of attention. Um, and that mostly I think came from COVID and just ensuring that um, students and teachers had access to internet to be able to do remote learning and teaching and, and things of that nature. Thank you. Thank you. Um, definitely want to definitely thank the police department for flipping burgers and hot dogs at uh, Movies by Moonlight. I have seen you guys out. I've seen a couple officers uh, at the same time, you know, outside in town, driving through town a lot. So I think presence is good. And thank you, Public Works, for getting it all nice, especially the weather. It was perfect. You guys did good there. Um, we do host city county dinner October 22nd through the 24th, one of those days. I'm going to ask you for your support and it's a uh, you know Tuesday Wednesday Thursday where should we have it location and menu so if you have some ideas it's about 30 people um, they usually pay you know they each pay for themselves so um, what are some of your thoughts if you guys can send them to me um, we'll work on trying to get that done but I'll probably that October 22nd 23rd or 24th um, will be when we get a host um, other than that, that is all I have for tonight. Um, Want to move in. Now we are going to go. The city of Scapoose will now meet in executive session for the purpose of ORS 
one nine two point six six zero. Oh yeah. And uh, we want to finish talking about uh, one point one nine two point six six zero two dash D labor negotiation. Representatives and news media or designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session. All other members of the audience are asked to leave the room. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except to state the general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision may be made in executive session. At the end of the executive session, we will return to open session and welcome the audience back into the room. Um, don't expect any decisions to be made afterwards. Um, right. Thank you.